Hello, my name is Julian Edgar, and I'm the author of this book, Modifying the Aerodynamics of Your Road Car. What I want to do in today's video is look at two new patents. Both relate to airflow at the front of the car, and I think the second one particularly is interesting in the way it handles cooling flow. Both patents have recently been issued to Jaguar Land Rover in the UK. So the first one, Aerodynamic Apparatus for Vehicle Bonnet, always very obscure titles for patents, and there's the link if you want to go and look at it for yourself. It's basically an approach to reduce the size of the area of the high pressure on the front of vehicles having flat front faces. Now let's have a look at how it actually works. So here's the critical diagram. And what you'll see is a guide panel has been placed above the bonnet or hood. Now they call that a spoiler, but it's really a guide panel for air. And here's the other critical point to look at. It takes the air in from as low as possible at the front of the car while still being above the grille. So an airflow duct is created between a guide panel and the bonnet or hood. And because of its low entrance point, and look what happens to the airflow to get up into it, it has the aerodynamic effect of lowering the bonnet height by 50 or even 100 millimeters, four inches, two to four inches, so reducing the area of high pressure on the front and therefore reducing drag. Now the patent also goes into some detail about how the grille design can actually block up. The little openings in the grille can block up as the airflow increases in speed and therefore deflect air upwards into this guide panel. But I haven't covered the grille design, you can look at that yourself. It's like a, a sort of passive active grille. Now looking down on that duct from above, it's rather interesting. It converges and then diverges, so it narrows and then widens, and this is the area it is discharging into. And the patent states that the airflow coming through the duct also has the ability to help entrain the air flowing over the top of the bonnet and therefore provide better attached flow. So that would also help reduce drag. So it's quite a tricky duct in terms of where it picks up air from and where it discharges air to. Now, I thought that was pretty interesting, but it's the next patent which I think has got great implications for people who want to modify their own cars and reduce the drag of cooling systems. But before we get to that, one other uh, photo or diagram from the patent. Notice that the entrance to that duct can actually not be at all obvious. So this one, it actually picks it up from there, discharges from there, but just looking at the front of the car, in this view at least, you wouldn't be able to see that entrance. So what's the other patent? Well, modifying the aerodynamic performance of a vehicle is its title, and there's a link that you can go and look at it for yourself. It's an approach to improving cooling flow and reduce the associated drag caused by that cooling flow. Now, before we get to the patent, just a little bit of background. If we look at these diagrams here, taken from the classic Who Show Second Edition, we can see that there's a number of different ways of handling the exhaust, the outlet air from the radiator. Here's a typical production car of the time. Here is another version where air is directed out through the wheel arches, a very, very common approach in many cars today. Usually not all the air going out the wheel arches, but quite a substantial proportion. Here's another approach where air is taken in as low as possible and is directed out through the bonnet or hood through an opening there, and I'll come to that in a minute. I want to revisit that. And here's another approach where air is taken in at the high pressure zone just ahead of the windscreen and then discharged out the bottom of the car. Now, if we look at the drag of each of these different approaches, we can see that one of them, C, is by far the lowest. Now that takes in air low down, passes it through the heat exchangers, exits it out through the bonnet. Now the trouble is, and you can see that here in this diagram, that airflow coming out is gonna disrupt all the airflow going across the bonnet or hood and potentially disrupt it onto the windscreen as well. Now, it can be done. And here in this Lotus, you can see the air outlet there. It directs the air along the upper surface of the bonnet. Those uh, shapes there help the airflow stay attached. But it's much easier in the Lotus and many other cars because the engine's back here. 
and there's room in terms of ducting to be able to achieve that. Here the famous uh, in Australia VL Wilkinshaw Group A, they put vents here in the bonnet to direct air out. It was still open underneath, but some of the air from behind the radiator was coming out here. And they put louvers directing the air along the bonnet as much as possible. I doubt it was very successful looking at the size of the bonnet bulge that was needed to clear the plenum chamber of the engine, but you can see the attempt that was being made. So in summary, approach C is best, but how do you handle the exhaust air without disrupting all the flows on the front upper surfaces of the car? Well, the patent we're about to look at puts together something we just covered, that guide vane on top of the bonnet, with this sort of approach where we have exit air coming out of the bonnet. Let's take a look. I think this is really tricky, and I think this is something that people could really have a good look at doing on their own cars as an individual modification. So firstly, we've got that guide vane, as we saw a moment ago in the other patent. It takes air in low, uh, well, still above the grill, but as low down as possible while still getting air flow through it to reduce the area of high pressure on the front. It feeds air through the diverging duct, which is shown here diagrammatically, and the air exits onto the second half of the bonnet. But here we also have a ducted radiator. Well, the air, the exhaust air from that radiator comes out at the same spot. Now let's have a look. If we've got airflow coming through there, directing air onto the rear half of the bonnet, and we've got airflow coming out here, the two airflows will become entrained, and the airflow will flow around this nice gentle corner, notice how it is a nice gentle corner, onto the bonnet and then onto the windscreen. So the airflow coming through the bypass duct is going to help increase the airflow exiting the radiator, which is good news, and it will also direct that air along, to the, bon along the bonnet, uh, giving much better attached flow. More good news. And it gets even trickier. Diagrammatically shown here is a flap that can close off the entrance to the radiator duct. It doesn't necessarily have to be a flap of this shape. It could be louvers or whatever. And when that duct is shut, of course, there's going to be a lot of air that will flow around here. But again, it is being guided. It is being guided by this extra vein. And so why do I think the patent actually suggests that? When the cooling flow to the main radiator is closed, the airflow that's bypassing, and there'll be a lot more airflow bypassing, will still be being guided. I think that's a very, very interesting approach to handling radiator airflow where the air is coming out through the bonnet. Here's a diagram that puts those ideas together. You can see it can be integrated stylishly and stylistically very well into the front of the car, but you have those two airflow directions and they join here on the trailing edge of the bonnet. If you want to read about more about aerodynamics, there's plenty in my book, Modifying the Aerodynamics of Your Road Car. It's available now, including from Amazon. Thank you.